You're listening to The Manning Report with your host, James David Manning. The news behind the headlines. So I sent out a tweet on yesterday that said that the, the definition of immigration in the tribulation, right? And I have to explain this to some of these knuckleheads that made some comments about it because they're real first class idiots. So the definition of immigration in the tribulation, then I gave the verses of Matthew's gospel, chapter 24, verse 1 through 22, because, you know, immigration is a big deal. The reason why uh, they voted, what's it, four years ago, the reason why the England, the UK, voted to, to do what they're known as British exit, the reason why the Brits decided to exit from the European Union is because of uh, the issue of immigration, uh, because you got all these brown skinned people, these black people coming in from Africa, coming in from even actually coming in from South America into uh, and Muslims, too, by the way, from the Middle East, coming primarily into Germany and to France. And you have heard about all the problems with France. There's a segment in France. I was I was always I was in London. When was this? This is oh, man, this is going back. 15 years ago, we were at, what's the name of that, the Piccadilly Circle? And we were, uh, we were, th- we were there, and just to, to the west, I think, of, of, of the east, rather, if I'm not mistaken, was Muslim town. And Muslim, you could smell the Muslim uh, oil. You know, and this is London, England. It, it's worse now. Elder McPaul, McFarquhar told me he was over there at Heathrow Airport the other day. He, he was flying over there to see his father. And he said, everywhere you look, they got Muslims or brown-skinned people working in every aspect of Heathrow Airport. First of all, I hate Heathrow Airport. And so Brit, the Brits decided to make an exit from the European Union where they had one currency. Well, the Brits never used the currency anyway, but they had the same economic structure. They all kind of went along the same thing. And they voted three years ago to get the Brexit. And they not, have not been able to figure a way to get out of it completely without both disrupting the process. But it's the immigrants that's, that's causing all that. And then we got an immigrant problem here in America, like you won't believe. Trump trying to put up a wall. He tried to put up a wall at the airport saying you can't come in. It got kicked down in the courts. So immigration is a major problem, and they just keep coming. You can't stop them. They're by the thousands. They're marching across uh, Mexico, and, 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 and they just keep coming from El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, uh, Nicaragua, Mexico, and, and even far as Venezuela, South America. And these are all brown skinned people that are coming uh, to America. And so the, um, I, I, um, I, 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 I went ahead and pointed out that the major problem right now uh, is, is, a, is, a, is, is, not, is not slavery racism. And that I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, a little, little hesitant about using the word slavery. But oh, black people racism, this is an immigration racism. Here's what I wrote. I tweeted this yesterday. Black and brown, I mean, Hamite people migrating to white or j nations in alarming and in dominant population numbers. No white people migrating to black or brown nations complain to Jesus but the prophecy cannot be stopped. In other words, what you see Trump fighting and a lot of other people fighting is that these, bra- these black and brown people um, um, are coming to, uh, to white nations, but white people aren't going to black nations. You got Africa, you got India, you got, and it, they let the Indians come in, by the way. And then you got the Mexicans, the, the El Salvadorans, you got the uh, Latinos, uh, and they are flooding the borders and flooding the states of America, and, and it's a major problem. And, um, but I, pro- I stated that it was a re- reference Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 1 through 22, that it's a prophecy. And I didn't say that I was prophesying. I said that Jesus prophesied that nation will be against nation and kingdom will be against kingdom. And one of the things that Jesus talked about in Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, is famines and pestilences and that kind of a thing. And I said, the prophecy can't be stopped. And a whole bunch of idiots responded. I'm going to read some of the things that they said, right? Stephen Durham, 
you know, I, and I, I, I like Stephen, but sometimes he goes off the, uh, maybe sometimes he's drinking. I don't believe you. Stephen, do you drink? Anyway, Stephen Durham I said, you ain't a prophet or a sociologist. Well, I mean, what's that mean? I, I didn't say this was my prophecy, Stephen. I said it's the prophecy of Jesus can't be stopped. So get your, get your ducks in, in a row. And I am a sociologist. And, and in fact, yeah, I am. So you're wrong about that. And then he goes, he, he didn't stop. They should have shut up then. Stephen continues to write. He, he writes, I can find more credible prophecy on bathroom walls. Now, I could, I, I, I could get down in the toilet with you on that one, too, Stephen, but I ain't going to the bathroom with you. I mean, I ain't going there with you. I mean, if that's where your mind is in the toilet and the bathroom, you can stay there by yourself, brother. But I ain't going to the bathroom with you. But I can see how you're trying to insult me. Anyway, this is so this guy named Sean Hurst said, if you're talking about Matthew 24, this scripture is the end of the world. Second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing to do with immigration. But these people are stupid. You know that? I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. Now, what does that have to do with immigration? What about nation against nation, you knucklehead? What about kingdom against kingdom? What about famines and pestilence and wars and rumors? What about that? Oh, I see. Then Vinny Banana, who's usually pretty on mark with far as me, he says, Pastor Manning is the last righteous man in Babylon. The human race last best hope. Then he writes, it's Pastor Manny. You're right about that, homeboy. You're right. I'm glad you know it. Anyway, Eric Miller, Eric Miller, Eric Miller, Eric Miller from Miller Time. It's Miller Time. Eric's out there in, in, in Indianapolis, Indiana, right? That's where he's from. Eric says, if you don't know the number one ministry in the world, it's all the land anointed, holy, or Atla. And if you want to be blessed, you will run there. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much for that. Send that to that guy, Son Hurst. Here's another one. Son Hurst, uh, Eric Miller, read Matthew 24 and tell me where it talks about immigration. You know, he said, I've been watching Pastor Manny for years and I believe he is a great preacher. This is what Sean Hurst says, right? However, I think that sometimes he let the issue of race get the better of him and he gets steered off the path of the word of God. You see, you see, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? This guy, Sean's probably been watching me for the past five, ten years, maybe. I don't know. Keep on watching. You'll learn something. And I think the other thing you ought to admit, Sean, is that you've learned a lot from listening to me. You ought to admit it. You ought to stand up and say it. But no, what do you think the Bible means when it says nation against nation, Sean, and kingdom against kingdom? Don't you think it's talking to people that are going to be fighting one another, coming against one another? I mean... All right, okay, let's leave him alone. Eric comes back and said, are you sure you have been watching the man of God because you are not getting it? So make sure you watch and learn from the man of God every day and you will be blessed. All right, that's, that's, that's Eric Miller. Stephen Durham chimes back in again. The last righteous man in Babylon, L-M-A-O. You know what that means? This is the guy, Stephen, I think he's drunk. I think this guy, Stephen Durham, is drunk. Maybe in Babylon. It's pretty cute. I like that. I don't, I don't appreciate it, but I like that Babylon. Babylon. I like that, Stephen, with the drunk self. Anyway, Stephen, he just writes it. What's, what is it with him? He writes again, class in session, all of Manning's assumptions about how this country came to be are wrong. What do you mean? Then mm, he gives he gives some I don't know some guy wrote me the other day talking about I was talking about African people not building anything. So I guess um, Stephen says class in session. Then he talks about separate people or land. The minds of the Cherokees, blacks and whites on separate people one land. The minds of Cherokee black. So I don't know I don't know what that is. This book is written by a real sociologist. Okay. Read it and learn knowledge is power. Manning is using superstitions for power. Uh, and the last, um, uh, 
last three comments about Stephen Durbin. I ain't giving him no more play today. This is a bit of a news blog we do, looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part, making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the Word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly, sinful view. But the man will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the Word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he, I'm the Lord, sir, James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.